ain't we? Whew. Yes, y'all. Yeah, oh, let's see, see, that's exactly what I'm talking about right there. See that? I heard. I heard somebody say that, you know, we should never say that. Well, I got, gotta go to church. You know, I, I say it, but you know, if you think about it, you should. I gotta go. You, you gotta. You, 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 you need to be excited about going. That's right. Yeah. I'm going. I'm going to church. I'm going. That's the reason I'm going is to, is to worship Him. That's right. To worship Him. You know. You know, we're gonna talk about that too. Uh, about that. That reason. You know, it's it's not I gotta go. I've got a choice. I can go or I don't have to go. You know, I mean, we live in a free country. We can do whatever we want to do. You know what? It's the things that we choose to do. And why we choose to do them. Not one of us here today chose to be brought into this world. Not one of us. Never one of us had a choice whether we were going to be here in this world or not. It's not like we were sitting up there floating around the cloud saying, Lord, I want to go to earth. I want to go down there and be with them crazy people. I mean, anybody that would look down on the chaos going on in this world around us would have to be crazy to want to come here, would they not? Yeah, it'd have to be crazy. They ain't worried about alien invasions. If, if I was an alien, I wouldn't even want to invade this place, that's for sure. Them jokers have lost their mind. They're going crazy. That's what I think. But hey, that's me. You know, the fact is, we didn't choose to be brought into this world, but we were, each one of us were chosen to be brought into this world. Have you ever thought about that? We weren't, we didn't choose to be here, but we were chosen to be here. What do you think about doing? Nobody loves me. When we get to feeling sorry for ourselves, nobody cares anything about me. Oh, poor, poor. You were chosen to be here. Not only were you chosen to be here, that they were, you were chosen by God to be here for a purpose, for His will. Boy, ponder on that for a second. God chose me to be here. And the fact that He chose me, what am I doing with my life that He gave me? What am I doing to bring Him glory? What am I doing to glorify God? What am I doing for His will? What are we doing? Since the beginning of time, every soul that has passed through the womb was chosen by God to be here for His will. And cause God, this, this, is where, this is where you can really see the deity of God. Because I, I don't know any other book or any other word that was given to all mankind but the word of God to guide and direct the children, the people that He sent here. He chose us to be here. It's not the fact that we just were conceived and born and lived. He gave us His Word. He gave us His Word. All right, I put you here. Here's my Word. This is what I want you to do while you're there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay out in this Word things that those that come before you done so you'll know not to make those same mistakes. I'm going to lay out in this Word those that come before you, the prophets and all that I sent, the judges that I sent, all the people that I'd sent to let you see how they made choices and how I chose and set them up. How I chose the kings. How I chose the prophets, how I chose all these people and why I chose them. And then I'm going to let you see the people that they chose. 
When I tell them to go choose you out men to go to battle. When I, when I see you choose you out these men among you to do these tasks. And I'll show you also the, the people that I set up to fulfill my will that were evil. That their hearts were hardened or, or those that betrayed or those that, that didn't trust. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know through my word those that, that turned their back on me. What happened to them so that you don't make the same mistake? I mean, that's, man, that makes me feel good. Because I didn't have a choice in the matter. But in the fact that I didn't, God loved me enough to send His Word. And not only that, He sent His Son to die for me. That I can choose to follow Him or I can choose to reject Him. But God put all in His Word what happens to those that reject Him and what happens to those that faithfully follow Him. That's exciting to me. <coughs> You know, because we think we don't have a purpose in this life. But you do. God wouldn't have put you here if it wasn't for a purpose. God wouldn't put you here this very day and this very time without a purpose. And you made the choice to be here. For from the time of conception all through life, what do we do? We weren't chose, but from the time we're born, we have to choose. As a child, we have to choose to eat. And a lot of kids, they reject food. They reject certain things. But when they choose, they choose life. Because they have to eat in order to survive. As children get older, they choose who their friends are. They choose to be obedient or disobedient. Their parents have to choose whether or not to scold their children or to, love, or, or to pat them on the back and tell them it's okay and call it love. I mean, life is full of choices. Life is so full of choices. And we're faced with choices every day. Some, some choices are for rejoicing. Sometimes we get rewarded for the choices we make because we make good decisions. Sometimes we have to pay the consequences of our choices. Sometimes we don't know what choice to make. And when we don't understand and don't know what choice that we need to make or where we need to stand or what we need to do, what are we supposed to do? What's the, word, what's the Bible tell us? Ask God. Pray. Read. When we, when we don't understand what's going on around us. We, we've got our duties as a nation. People have, it's been laid upon us to vote our elected officials. So we have a choice to make. We have a choice to make. You know, when, when I hear people talking about their faith and their Christianity and lifting up a baby murdering, abominable candidate, that makes me wonder. What choices have they made in their life? How can the church stand behind a woman like that? And then on the other hand, we've got another man over here that's lived a sinful, abominable life. Who hadn't? We're all under sin. We're all in sin. We're not the judge. We're the judge righteous judge. We're the judge within the church. You know, what do we do? It's our choice. It's our choice. Whether we stand with them or we stand with God. What's going what's to push us to the point to where when we look at the decisions that are laid out before us, whether we serve man or we serve God, we have to live in this world. We're part, we're part of this world, but we're not of this world. What do we do? It's not a sin to vote for leaders. No. If God's laid it on your heart to vote, but do you look at the things that these candidates bring forth? You weigh their actions out with the Word of God. You weigh their character by the Word of God. And then you make your decision.
Y'all turn in your Bible to 1 Samuel chapter 8. Y'all should have all read this. You should know this story. There was a nation that came about from the faith of one man. From Abraham. The nation of Israel. One man that had a choice. And he chose to be obedient unto God. One man that a nation was born. And this nation was God's chosen people. 1 Samuel chapter 8 says, And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second, Abai, and they, they were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre and took bribes and perverted judgment. What's that sound like? They took bribes. They took money. They paid to play. They perverted judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together. Then the church, all the elders of Israel, they come together. We can't, we can't keep on. We got to have a king. We need somebody to rule over us. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel under Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Boy, the sons have perverted our ways. We're getting beat down on every side. Samuel, make us a king. Just, just get us somebody, make somebody to rule over so we can be like everybody else. We don't want to be just God's chosen people anymore. We want to be like the rest of the world. That's what they're saying. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people. You hear that? The Lord told Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. See, it wasn't the fact that Israel wanted a king. There wasn't nothing wrong with them wanting a king because God had laid it out in Deuteronomy 17 what the king should be. Because he knew that there was going to be a king over Israel. But at this point in time, it's not the fact that they wanted a king. It's the fact that they rejected God because what they wanted was a king that they could see. They wanted to walk by sight. They weren't walking by faith. They wanted somebody to come in here and defeat all these armies. They wanted somebody to come in here and get rid of all the corruption. They wanted somebody to come in here and stand up for the people. Stand up for us. Fight our battles. They wanted a man to take over. That's what they wanted. What's America want? We want the same thing. But you see right here, this is a king. This is a monarchy government. This is monarchy here. This is what that's called when you have a king, a ruler over all the people. We live in a republic. The people in this nation are the power. The people in the United States of America elect officials to represent the people. So the officials that we elect, what do they do? They represent the people. The heart of the people. Israel wanted a king. They wanted a visible deliverer. They wanted to be like everybody else. They wanted to be like everybody else. So they rejected God because God was their king. You see, they were fighting battles and they were losing. They were dealing with corruption because of the judges were corrupt. But they didn't realize 
it wasn't because of the corrupt judges. It was because of their own sin that the judges were corrupt. It was because of their own sin that they were being defeated in battle. And that the fact that their own sin was causing them to be defeated, they wanted to reject their God that brought them out of Egypt and find a king to rule over them. Somebody I can talk to. Somebody I can see. Somebody that I can have a, a visual image. I can see them in action. But see, they had lost their faith in God. Verse 8 says, According to all the works which they have done since, this, since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherein they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also, also unto thee. Verse 9 says, Now therefore hearken unto their voice. Here's what God said, hearken unto their voice. Howbeit yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. See, God didn't stop them. God didn't say, no, they're not going to get a king. He said, listen to them. They want a king? We'll give them a king. They want someone to rule over them? We'll give them someone to rule over them. Listen to them and hear what they have to say. And protest solemnly unto them and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. Verse 10 says, And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen. And some shall run before his chariots. And he will also, and he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties and will set them to ear his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his instruments of war and instruments of his chariots. And he will take your daughters to be confectionaries and to be cooks and to be bakers. And he will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive yards, even the best of them and give them to his servants. And he will take the tenth of your seed and of your vineyards and give to his officers and to his servants. And he will take your men servants and your maid servants and your goodliest young men and your asses and put them to his work. And he will take the tenth of your sheep and ye shall be his servants. And ye shall cry out in that day because of your king which he shall have chosen you. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. Boy, that's tough there. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. You know, have you ever felt rejection? Somebody that's done everything that they could for you. I mean, you see it all the time. You know, people trying to make their way to the top. They start out humble beginnings and they start growing. They struggle. Boy, they're fighting tooth and nail. They want to be something. They got it set in their mind and all the people that are sitting there holding them up all the way. When they get to that point, they turn their back on them. Boy, you ever, you ever witness that? You ever see that? Especially with your kids. Daddy used to always say, step on your toes when they're little and step on your heart when they get big. You know, they break your heart. That's what people do. That's what people do, and that's a hurtful feeling. Can you imagine a righteous God having that feeling? A vengeful God? Knowing that he's a vengeful God, would you want to push him to that point? I wouldn't. I wouldn't dare want to push my God to the point of vengeance. But he said, give them the king that they want. And when they cry out, I won't hear them. I won't hear them because they haven't heard the words of the prophets, they won't listen. They're hard in their hearts. Verse 19, and, and, and Samuel told them this thing. Samuel said, this is the king you'll get. And God said, in the day that you cry out, he won't hear you. And then verse 19, nevertheless, nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, nay, but we will have a king over us. We don't, we don't 
care what God says, basically is what they're saying. God, God is, you know, we're, we're going through too much stuff right now. We've got a lot going on. We're getting whipped on every side. Our military is depleted. Our money is no good. There's corruption all over. You can't trust the government. But we're going to put somebody over us that will fix all this. What's that sound familiar? Only God can fix it. Only God can fix it. When we, when we keep turning our heart, looking for man to set things right, we need to start asking God to set things right in us. Right. Lord, I'm not, I'm not refusing your words. I'm not rejecting your words, Lord. And ask God, what is it that we should do? And see what He tells you. He tells me the same thing every time. Repent, repent, repent. Trust in me. Trust me. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Don't fear what man can do unto you. Fear what God can do. He's a consuming fire. He's a vengeful God, vengeful God. Do we provoke Him to jealousy? All these words when I ask Him, Lord, what is it that I do? Because I'm a patriot. I love this country. I would die for this country. I would die for my church and I'll die to defend the gospel of Jesus Christ. What should I do, Lord? What should I do? It's my choice. It's our choice. So what do we do? Verse 20 says, That we also may be like, may be like all nations, and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. See? And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the man of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city. He said, I've heard them. I know their hearts. I know their thoughts, God said. We'll make them a king. We told them what was going to happen to them. They still refuse me. So give them what they want. Give them their heart's desire. You know, it's hard for the church to make these decisions. I know there's pastors out there pushing, voting for Trump, voting for, you know, vote, vote, vote. And I understand their cause. And if God is leading you to go vote, go vote. But I'm not feeling it this year. I love the Lord thy God. I love Him. And I fear Him. And I know that from the things that are going on in this world around us, that it's going to be soon. That He's going to come back and He's going to deliver us up. He's going to take us out of this world. I was thinking about this this morning. You know, Moses, when he led the children out of Egypt, and Korah and the men, they stood up against him. They, they made false gods and false images, and they, they stood up against Moses. And he come to Moses and Moses, you lead us out here. Aren't we all holy? Hey, aren't we all the same? We're all holy. We're all God's children. That's what he's saying. He's saying the same thing the church is saying today. We're all God's children. He loves us all. You're just trying to, you're just trying to take on too much, Moses. And Moses prayed. 
And God told him, he said, go before the tabernacle. And they stood there, and all of Korah's men, all the followers of Korah, they pleaded with them, turn, turn. But that very day, Moses told them, the Lord, if it be God's will, he's going to swallow you up. The ground will open up and swallow you. Hey, oh, are you crazy? What happened? The ground opened up. And all of their possessions, all of their houses, all the people that forsook God to follow man were swallowed up and went straight to the pits of hell in their flesh while they were yet living. And then the ground closed up over them. And then you got the rest of them. When they saw what had happened, and they went to the tabernacle, and they were crying out because they had, they were, they had a problem with that. Why would God do that? Why would he do that? They refused what had happened. They didn't glorify God the fact that they had swallowed them up. They went cursing God. And what God sent a plague of fire down upon them and consumed over 14,000 more. But Moses made a choice. He sent Aaron in. And Aaron made intercession for the rest of them that hadn't been consumed yet. And they were delivered. So you see the same thing. That's what's happening now. The church... It's falling away. We built on, we're sitting on the edge of the cliff right now. And every day it's eroding more and more. And if we can't see that, we need to ask God to show it to us. Because the church is being picked at. It's being plucked away. People are falling away every day. Oh, I love the Lord. I believe in Jesus. Oh, well, they're Muslims. That's okay. Or, or they, they let them worship what they want to. That's okay. I, they can come in any time and accept all these abominations into the church. <laughs> all these abominations. Jesus Christ died for sinners. But the Bible tells us, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. They're not calling on the name of my Lord. The world ain't calling on the name of my Lord. My Lord's name is not Muhammad. My Lord's name is not Buddha. My Lord is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. My Lord loved me enough to send His only Son to die upon a cross for me. My Lord is the same one that delivered the children out of Egypt. My God is the same one that provided the provisions we talked about last week when Joseph went into Egypt, when he was sold. Into, it's my God that put him there. It's my God that, that made that happen. It's my God that made those provisions that a nation was born, that a nation would grow, that a nation would be called Israel. And that through him, through that nation, then there came a king, King David. And through that king, his heart, his psalms, and everything that God put in his word, we can read and understand. And through him, through Isaiah, through the prophets, through Ezekiel, Hosea, all the, all the way through the word of God, you can see Jesus Christ. And then he came. The Messiah. He came. <laughs> And he lived in this flesh that I'm living in, in this flesh that we struggle in. He lived in it. Through his sufferings, the Bible said, he learned obedience. His sufferings, he struggled with the same things that we struggle with. But yet, not one aspect did he ever sin. You know, as he sat there in the garden, weeping tears as if they were drops of blood, saying, Father, I would that this cup would pass from me. He made a choice. He made a choice to suffer the death of the cross right there. Not that my will, but thine be done. Not my will, but thine be done. And that's what we have to ask ourselves. Are we searching for our own will? Are we looking 
at God's will. Because it's for His will that we were chosen by Him to be on this earth right now. It's for His will. <coughs> Deuteronomy chapter 17. Starting in verse 14. This is what God laid out for the king that was to come. Verse 14 says, When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shalt possess it, and shalt dwell therein, and shalt say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me. Are, that are about me. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. Whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. But he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to the end, that he should multiply horses for as much as the Lord has said unto you. Ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply him to himself silver and gold. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priest and the Levites. And it shall be with him and he shall read therein all the days of his life that he may learn to fear the Lord his God to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them. That his heart be not lifted up above his brethren and that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days in the kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. Now, I hope you all understand all those words. They're pretty simple. Don't build up silver and gold. Don't build up horses. Write the law. Read it daily. Must be a man of thy brethren. You see... When you read these words and you know the things that God is saying, this is going to be the manner. This is, if you, when you set up a king, when you require a king, God said he'll choose him. But this will be the manner of the man that he chooses. But yet, kings heap up gold and silver and chariots. Solomon, he, he, he broke every one of these commandments of a king. Every one of them. Thousand wives and concubines. He had the biggest stables that there was in the land. The most wealthiest man that there ever was and ever will be. But yet, God used him. God used him. All the women and all the false god, his heart turned from God in the end. He turned from God. But he was a tool for God, for God's will. You see, we, we have a choice. But God looks on our hearts. He looks on our hearts. So the choice is, where's your heart? Where am I following? Lord, am I trusting you? Lord, there's going to be a king. There's going to be a ruler. There's going to be a president of the United States. Which one? Which one is going to stand with the church? Which one's going to stand with the body of Christ? That's why we have to vote. And when we have to vote, we have to vote for one that's going to uphold the values that this nation was founded on. We the people. That's what a republic is. We the people. 
So when you go vote, you vote for your children. You vote for your church. You vote for the Word of God. Because I'm going to tell you, the world doesn't want to hear the Word of God. You know, we had choices lined up before us. And the world, the nation narrowed it down to these two that we have right now. You had godly men stand before you in debates and talks that weren't afraid to say the name of Jesus Christ. That weren't afraid to speak the truth and the gospel in front of a camera where the whole nation could see. But nobody wanted to hear it. Nobody wanted to hear it. They're not strong enough. I'm afraid they wouldn't be bold enough. See, what the world forgets is God fights our battles. He fights our battles. So we made our choice before we even voted. And ask yourself if you go to vote, these qualities that we just read about the future king of Israel, this king in Deuteronomy, match any of the criteria that we have before us. Mark chapter 10, verses 42 through 45, Jesus said, You know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. But he goes on to say, But so shall it not be among you. But so shall it not be among you. That's Mark chapter 10, verses 42 through 45. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be service, servant to all. You hear that? Whosoever be the chiefest among you shall be servant unto all. Who are we, what are we voting? A commander in chief. So if whoever you're voting for ain't serving, going to be a servant to all. Christ is talking to the church here. He's saying it shall not be so among us. But, and whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be served of all. But even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So you see, those that are elected, those that rule over, aren't who you need. First Peter chapter 2 you know you're a chosen generation the Bible tells us 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 says but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. You hear that? Strangers. He said, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. Abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, that may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him. By the, for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness but as servants of God. For so is the will of God that with well doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. By well-doing. So you know, it, it really doesn't matter who gets in office. 
because we are strangers in this land. We are pilgrims. We're to come out and be separate until we realize that. We have a choice. We can try to mingle in with the world or we can try to stand with Christ. We can try to stand on the Word of God or we can mingle with the world. We have an obligation. We have a duty. So do it. But ask God. Ask God to reveal to you what it is that we should do. What it is that we should do. Well, I'd love to see America great again. I love the slogan. Boy, I think, you know, it paints a vivid picture of how things used to be. Man, when I was a child, you know, I, that's what I'm thinking. When I, when I see that and I hear all this greatness that he's going to do. But you know what? I don't think as a child anymore. I'm a child of God now. Not of this world. Joshua 24. And we'll close. Joshua chapter 24. Verse 14. It says, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But everybody in here has got that plaque on their door somewhere. But we need to know what's before that. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Because those that you vote for are to serve you. And if you're a child of God, they'll be your servants. And they're servants of God. We have a choice, and the choice is yours. Follow God. Trust God. And trust His words. Because He chose you for a reason. He chose you for this moment. He chose you for this generation. He chose you for this day. He chose you for this election. He chose you for the outcome of what's to come tomorrow on the next day. So you make the choice to follow Him and to have faith in Him and walk by faith and not by sight. Don't be as Israel did when they wanted, they wanted a king. They wanted somebody they could see. They wanted a physical body standing there that they could point fingers at and say, that ain't what we wanted. That's not what he said. Oh, we were going to make change. Look at what happened to Obama. Look at this. Look at how things go. We want something we can point a finger at. We don't want something that's pointing a finger at us. So trust God. Make the right choice this week. Keep God in all your thoughts.